Welcome to the December 3rd, 2020 Dover Area School Board Reorganization Meeting. If you'd please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mrs. Allman. Could we have the roll call, please? Mrs. Britton. Mr. Cook. Here. Mr. Deschel. Mr. DeLauder. Here. Mr. Eifert. Here. Mr. Emig. Here. Mrs. Herman. Here. Mrs. Maley. Here. Mr. Rawhauser. Here. Seven present. Okay, we'll move into our board reorganization uh, portion of the meeting tonight. According to section number 401 of the school code in the Dover Area School District Board Policy number 5, the school directors shall meet and organize annually during the first week in December. Uh, the first step in this process is to elect a temporary board president uh, to run this portion of the meeting. Uh, so at this time, I will call for nominations from the floor. Please nominate Rachel Mealy. Are there any other nominations? Okay, with only one nomination, our board secretary will cast the ballot for Rachel Maley for temporary board president. Okay, and the motion carries. Mrs. Maley. Okay, um, so this is for the election of board president for a one-year term. Um, I call for the nominations. Of I'd like to nominate Nathan Eifert. Any further nominations? There are no objections. I declare the nominations closed. Uh, with only one nomination, our board secretary will cast a ballot for Nathan Eifert. Does the new president wish to make a statement? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate everybody's confidence. Okay. Next step in this process. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. It didn't come up on the screen, <laughs> did it? <laughs> did it come up on the it screen? It did come up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Next step in the process is the election of our board vice president for a one year ter term. So at this time, I'll call for nominations from the floor. Dr. Lauder. Okay. Are there any other nominations for vice president? Okay, seeing none, and if there are no objections, I'll declare the nominations closed. With only one nomination, our board secretary will cast the ballot for Chuck DeLauder. And the motion carries. Nathan, I am, have clicked multiple times to join the meeting, but it's not accepting me in, and so I am not voting for any of this at this point. You can do a voice vote, Rachel. Okay. Well. Yes, for all those things we already voted for. <laughs> okay, now we'll move on to our board committee organization. So at this time, I'll entertain a motion to appoint the board committee representatives for 2021. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Questions or discussion? Hearing none, Mrs. Allman? And the motion carries. Next, I'll entertain a motion to approve the board meeting dates for 2021. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Questions or discussion? 
Hearing none, Mrs. Almond. Letting me open the online voting, so we'll take a voice vote. Mr. Cook? Yes. Mr. DeLauder? Yes. Mr. Eifert? Yes. Mr. Emig? Yes. Mrs. Herman? Yes. Mrs. Maley? Yes. Mr. Rawhauser? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you. Now we're at our public comment period. Dr. Maloney, do you know if anybody has shown up in the waiting area? Okay, all right, thank you. Board President's communication. We did have an executive session prior to our meeting tonight to go through the process of what we would be doing here um, and to also receive some updates on some district business items. Um, and I promised my daughter I would try to make these meetings quick tonight so I can get home and celebrate her 18th birthday today. So, well, thank you. I can't believe I'm that old. So. Um, we'll move on to any other miscellaneous comments or observations from our board members tonight. Okay, uh, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting and we will be then going into another meeting uh, to conduct some further business. So do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye, opposed. Motion carries, this meeting is adjourned. Okay. I did it like four times and it finally let me, me All in. Did it. Yeah. So we'll see if it lets me in this one. December 3rd, 2020, special meeting of the Dover Area School District Board of Directors. Uh, could we have the roll call, please, Mrs. Allman? Mrs. Britton? Mr. Cook? Here. Mr. Deschel? Mr. DeLauder? Here. Mr. Eifert? Here. Mr. Emig? Here. Mrs. Herman? Here. Mrs. Maley? Here. Mr. Rawhauser? Here. Seven present. Okay, thank you. Um, Dr. Maloney, I'm assuming in those three minutes nobody has snuck in the door <laughs> for public comment period for this meeting. <laughs> okay. Uh, board President's communication, we are excited tonight for this meeting. Uh, the purpose, primary purpose of this meeting tonight is to uh, vote for our new superintendent uh, to join the district uh, later in 2021. So we're very excited to do that tonight. Uh, we also have an update from Mrs. Kroom on uh, the Department of Health and the state requirements uh, related to the attestation statement that we would uh, be signing and have submitted to the state uh, and anything else that would come before the board. So with that, I will turn it over to Mrs. Kroom. Okay. So as you are all aware, last week uh, we, re re we received information from PDE that in order to remain in any type of face-to-face -face instruction, the district um, the superintendent and the board president were to sign a PDE attestation form and it had to be submitted to PDE by Monday. Um, there were two options on this form. The first option being that if we are in person, we agree to follow the face mask mandate and we follow the recommendation uh, for K-12 schools following a COVID case. The second option uh, we are given is that we would shut down in-person instruction under any circumstance. Uh, the second option would not allow us to be AB, would not allow us to be five days, would not allow us to bring in special populations um, in person if we wanted to do so. So um, we have gone with the very first option of having face-to-face -face and um, complying with what PDE is requiring us to comply with. 
So the first one is the face mask update. There really isn't a lot of updates with the fa face mask mandate. Um, one of the main things that we dealt with was the fact that a number of parents and staff members do use um, the face shields rather than face masks and the face mask mandate says that it does call for face masks um, except for extenuating circumstances. So we, uh, while we are allowing extenuating circumstances, circumstances we are um, documenting that so we have all that information. We're also just kind of shoring up some of our procedures for face masks like as soon as students are done eating they put their face mask back on making sure face masks are worn at recess and outside and during phys ed and those kinds of things so I feel very very comfortable we have done already a great job I believe with the face mask mandate and so it was just a matter of really making sure we're following through the second recommendation is a little bit of a change so in agreeing to re remain opening uh, open the do district does agree to follow the recommendations from PDE regarding when to close. So you are looking at the PDE website which lists the recommendations we are to follow when we are notified of a COVID case. So this uh, document, it um, is broken down into three levels of schools, small, medium, and large schools. And we'll start with the small schools. So this is less than 500 students. This does affect all of our elementary schools. And I just wanna show you and explain how this is broken down. So if you look at the header on the top, the left gives the level of community transmission in the county. And as you are aware, your county is substantial. Then the number of cases within the 14 day rolling period, um, if it's one student or staff, and then it moves over to the next column, two to four students or staff, and the next column is five students or staff. Now, the 14 day rolling period moves every day. So today it's today and our previous 13 days. Tomorrow it will be tomorrow and the previous 13 days. And at any time, if we hit these numbers, we have to close school. So if you take a look at this, and, and remember, two to four, one student in the first column, two to four in the second, this is elementary only, five in the third. If you go down to where it does say substantial, under one student, it says schools should consider altering schedule uh, to significantly decrease number of students on site. Clean areas, but we don't need to close. So in the elementaries, if we get one case, they, they are not recommending we need to close. Go to the middle. Um, and again, schools should consider altering schedule. And we've discussed moving to an A, B and our reasons for staying with five day in person right now. Um, this requires you to close schools for three to seven days. That's under two to four students. And I think that all is going to depend on how the cases look to us. So if it looks like it's a, a whole class where a lot of kids are maybe getting it, that's a very different circumstance than a student coming in and another student who are not connected. So that's how we'll determine how many days and how many students. And I wanna remind you, every single solitary case we receive is reviewed with the Department of Health. The Department of Health does keep a record of Dover and they do look for patterns in our district and will recommend what we need to do. So we will be making decisions with the Department on, of, of Health, whether it's two kids, three kids, four kids, and is it three days or seven days? And then of course you clean everything. And then if you go one over in the small schools, once you hit five or more, they are saying to close for 14 days, okay? So this is guidance that is new for us. Before it was recommendations, now it is not recommendations, it is required because we have agreed to stay open. So Tracy, then it, with yes. our recent cases that we've had mm -hmm. in the district, would any of our buildings have fallen into this yes. situation at this yes. point? Yes, yes, okay. yeah. As a matter of fact, we had a really weird time in live where things were very odd there. They would have fallen, in, they would have fallen okay. into this, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Could I ask a question sure. on, on that? Um, if you have a student who tests positive and you have others who are in contact that then quarantine, are those quarantine students also considered part of that? No. Okay. The only are considered are positive cases or if Department of Health declares them a positive case. Um, and this is only when we're in session. So on Monday, when this is rolled out to everybody, we should be at zero for everything. 
because any cases we had over the last two weeks, we were not in session. So PDE is very, very clear that it's when we're not, when we're not if, if we are shut down or a long holiday, we're not in session, the cases don't count. Now, you gotta look at all of that because, so this week is okay, but if you go to the first week we were online, while we were still online, a child who tested positive kind of went back to when we were in school and they did, they did um, put other kids into close contact. They could still be counted, but right now, closing down for 14 days, 14 days is really a magic number. You shut down for 14 days and you come back, you are clear. You are starting all at the beginning. So this whole Thanksgiving thing was a really, really worked out well for us. We get to start clean on Monday, so that's great. So the 14 days, is that calendar days or school days? 14 straight days. Straight days. Okay. Yep, straight days. So that includes the weekend. Yes, July. yes, yep. Okay. All right, so if we run just to go through to the middle size school, the, middle, the medium size school is definitely the middle school, and the middle school like comes to the upper end of this. And if you look at it, it's the same setup. It's one to three students where you don't have to shut down. Four to six students you shut down. Uh, I think it's, again, if you want to just scroll down real quick. I just want to think it's the five to seven, two. Yeah, oh, three to seven school days. Yep, three to seven school days. And Amy, will you bop back up again? And then um, uh, for the 14 day closing, it's seven plus school, but seven plus cases. Now this includes both staff and students, okay? Um, and it includes whether it's a student, they got it in school or they got it at a party on the weekend, it doesn't matter. If they are positive, they count, unless they're students who are not in-person instruction. So all of our students in cyber school do not count. All of our students doing blended instruction do not count. Um, if a student is on quarantine from another situation and gets it, they've not been in school, they won't count. Okay, it all depends on where they land in that 14 day moving window, all right? So again, the middle school is at the upper end of this. The last size school, which is the large size school, is 900 students or more. Our high school is like a thousand. And I wanna say probably with our students on blended and online, we are under 900. Um, however, we, that is considered a larger school. So probably in using this data, I will lean more towards the medium side school at the upper end. And if I'm looking, if I'm using this size school, I'm probably going to the lower end. So when I'm doing the number of cases in the middle, I'm probably going towards the six, not the 10. Does that make sense? So again, you know, depending on, it, it, everything will depend on the situation. So I am very comfortable with this guidance. Again, PD, or Department of Health will be guiding us through a lot of these decisions and helping us and talking us through. Um, and again, you, when you shut down the school, you clean it really well and you come back and you start all over again. So that is how it will look as we move forward starting on Monday. Tracy, the, the range in days, you know, like three to five or three to seven, What's the purpose there? How do you know it's three days, four days, five days, I, six days? I think days, it will depend seven. on what we're dealing with. So say, for example, um, we have, maybe it's contained to one class. And we're like, we are not seeing anywhere else in this class. Okay, so we, maybe we shut down everything and we quarantine the whole class, but we bring the rest of the building back sooner. And another, maybe it is a, uh, like a basketball player who's all over the place and in many classes and many different ages, then maybe that is a reason to go the longer time. Okay. Does that make sense? Yep. So it, just as we kind of feel our way through this, uh, you know, and, and I wanna remind you, if you remember, when we shut down the high school at the be beginning of the school year, when we had all of a sudden that Monday, all of those cases, and if you remember, we knew we had two or three positive cases and we knew we had two or three and a couple teachers being tested in, in the wings. So we shut down for five days. And if you remember, come Sunday, we started hearing other teachers were being tested and we decided to extend it two more days because what if we came in on Monday and they were all positive? We decided it wasn't worth it. Well, we came in Monday and they weren't. So it was like, that's okay. Monday, Tuesday, we were back Wednesday. So I think that that's kind of how the decision, where are they? Remember, this data is based on the two ways we're identifying kids. If they're symptomatic, 
we go back 48 hours to look at when they started to be contagious. If they're not symptomatic, we look at the day they test positive. Okay, so again, where are they in this? Hey, we might, they parent might call us and say, oh, my kid tested positive and I've had him home for two weeks because he's been sick. Well, he's at his end of his contagiousness. So, you know, that's, take that into account where we are in that, whether how many days we go. So. So if they're, you talked about this rolling number. Rolling, yep. So they all come back Monday and they're on day one, but depending on what happens, every school could be on a different rolling Yes. Day. Oh, geez. Okay. Yes, yes. And I'm gonna show you something else in a minute that is great and Dustin Boyd helped Amy and I do it and look at how she's smiling. This, is, we're so happy about this. We're gonna show you this in a minute. Okay. So everyone understands, so, so for this attestation form, we agreed to do this and that's how we're staying open. Face mask and this. And just I want to remind you that when school closes, so does athletics and extracurricular. Okay? Everything shuts down. All right. So the other thing I want to share with you that um, it, is, it is out there now, but we're still kind of playing with it. So we have created a dashboard. No longer are we going to send emails to families. And I'll tell you, after last week where we had a number of cases, it was really difficult. No longer are we going to send emails to families or the entire staff if we have cases in buildings. Everything will be reflected on this dashboard. And then on Fridays, we will send a reminder out to families saying, hey, you know, check out the dashboard. You know, this is what happened this week. So would you share our new dashboard? And again, lots of thanks to Dustin um, who did this for us. So this is gonna be on our website. On the left, you will see these are our, t now, reported within 14 days. Amy, would you quick go show them the spreadsheet that we'll be filling out? So to populate this, Amy, every morning, is going to populate this spreadsheet with the previous day's data. So if you kind of scroll down, yep, she's scrolling to where um, we populated. So what we did is we went back, so, when I reported all of our data to you and to everyone else up until last week, I reported cases as I got them. As, as soon as we knew, I reported it to you. That was the time frame I was using. Well, that time frame is not gonna work for this. It can't just be a parent called us today and their child tested positive last week. So what we are now doing is we will be reporting on here asymptomatic students the day they test positive or symptomatic students 48 hours prior. Those are the two benchmarks uh, the Department of Health is using to determine when, how long their um, quarantine is and how long all their close contacts quarantine are. So Amy and I went back to every single case we've had this year. We've also reported to you, we've had a couple times where students were blended students, weren't even in the building, but we counted them. We didn't know any better. Well, now we're not counting them, so we pulled them out. So if you take a look at it, we went, we went all the way back to September, and you don't have to go back, Amy, but you will see per each building, this is a spreadsheet she's gonna populate the next day. How many cases in each building and how many people are quarantined, and we're combining staff and students. for the, We don't wanna separate them out. And we're doing all of the six buildings and the administration building. Okay, so for like what she's showing you now, on the 15th, Dover Middle School had two cases and 35 kids, or 35 people um, quarantined that day. So populating this then populates our website, populates this. So right now, remember where we are. We are at the end of 14 days with no school. So a lot of our cases have fallen off. A lot of our cases that were identified last week, we didn't count because they tested positive during our 14 days off. They had been off for eight days before <coughs> they even became positive. So each of the buildings has a box. So if you look at Dover Area High School, reported within the last 14 days or since the last DAHD COVID-related closure, um, we've had one. Uh, and then individuals' quarantines will tell you in the status of the building. So there's the high school, the middle school, the elementary, and if you wanna go down, and then we have um, Dover Elementary, we have North Salem, we have Weigelstown and the admin building. And you'll see there's zeros because this 14-day window is running out because we were not in school. 
So people will be able to go on and look on this every single day and see how many cases. They will also be able to click on the bottom to the full breakdown and look at the spreadsheet so they can go to see what Amy does populate in our spreadsheet. So, so they will see that. So that is a role, so that will tell us how many kids are in the 14 day rolling, moving, and every day we're gonna add a new day and one day will drop off. And then we'll add a new day and the last day will drop off. And kids will drop off and ki or cases will drop off and cases will drop on. So we think this is gonna be great for the community to see. It's going to let them see if we're getting close to a closure in their building much easier than me sending them an email just saying, hey, by the way, um, this is what we have. So this is going to be much easier for the staff and the families to look at. Tracy, where will this be found on the website? I mean, is there a button like right yes. on the front page? Or, yes, okay. right on the front page. First, there is a button on the left that says COVID information, but we also put a um, COVID-19 button on the top. Okay. So it will be found in both places. Okay. Really easy for people to see. So we're very, very excited about that. Okay, any questions about that? Yes, I understand um, not counting cyber kids, but why do we not count the blended kids in the numbers? Are because they're not being instructed in our building. Now, if they're an AB kid, they will be counted. Oh, that's what I thought. You yes. Said. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I was, okay. Yeah. No. Makes sense. The blended, the ones okay. at home in our blended, well, aren't counted because they're not in our building. Okay. So the ones that are online. Are yeah. Okay. Right. The okay. ones that are online. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, I just wanted to update. So tonight you're voting on the attestation form, and this is what we're doing to comply with that. So I, I really wanted you to understand um, what we're doing. All right, and just I wanted to give you a little update on athletics because you might be wondering what's happening with athletics and extracurriculars and all of this. Um, so first, uh, we received guidance from Ben's uh, firm regarding athletics and the fact that the face mask mandate is for all the time, every day, all the time. So in, you know, do they wear it in the swimming pool? Do they wear it on the basketball court and all of that? So the guidance we receive from Ben is they're to wear their masks at all times except when they're actively engaged in, um, in, in a strenuous activity with, you know, in competing. That being said, they also provided us guidance that they would like us to review this with our school doctor. So um, Amy and I are going to work to set up a Zoom meeting with Troy, myself, and our school doctor to share the guidance from our solicitor and, and make sure that our school doctor is okay with that right now our thoughts are not swimming with it, of course. Um, when the five players are on the basketball court, they have it on uh, and things like that. So we just want to firm that up. So we're going to be doing that. They also changed the um, spectators from 20% down to 10%. So our first uh, contest is on December 18th. Troy will be working on who are those 10% that get the tickets to see their kids play. Um, and this will be communicated with coaches and families. So um, that will be coming. Right now we are not allowing any spectators for scrimmages at all. So we've really not had to deal with this. But this also involves our extracurricular. So you know we have to adjust there as well. Um, and, and just again a reminder that when, when schools close, so do athletics. Um, I will tell you that um, the league and the ADs are all working together to try to be consistent because what our solicitor is advising us to do could be different than what someone else's solicitor is advising them to do. And I do know of districts whose kids are wearing masks on the court. So we're talking about right now, what does that mean when you go to another district? So we're working those things out right now. Um, our initial reaction right now is that the hosting school, we probably follow their recommendations. So if, let's just say another school district requires face masks while playing basketball, and we go to that school, then we will be wearing face masks playing basketball. So they're working out all of those details. I'll keep you posted on that. Um, I, you know, some districts are, are very concerned about this and are, might not be willing to play other districts that are not wearing the face masks, and that's, that's just what we'll deal with. So, so I just kind of wanted, as we're getting close to athletics, and we will have our first basketball games coming up um, over the holidays and right before the holidays, I just wanted to kind of tell you where we were with that. Question, Any, question. Yes. Um, the, the spectators, uh, the 10%, I think at one, at one point, weren't we, didn't we have some flexibility based on the size of the venue? It is now 10% of the capacity. 
10 percent of the capacity so yeah. that would vary from yeah 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 where you are yes yeah okay any questions great thank you okay thank you for that report mrs cream all right, so with that, I'll entertain a motion to approve the Dover Area School District attestation statement for the Pennsylvania Department of Education, ensuring the implementation of mitigation efforts. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or discussion? Okay, Mrs. Allman. motion carries okay next on our agenda is the appointment of Do dr. Kelly Cartwright as assistant to the superintendent so at this time I'll entertain a motion to appoint dr. Kelly Cartwright as assistant to the superintendent of the Dover area school district effective March 1st 2021 per the addendum agreement and then as superintendent of schools starting May 1st 2021 under the terms of the agreement entered into by the district and dr. Cartwright so move we have a motion and seconds. Questions or discussion? Okay, I'd like to say that we had a very uh, exciting and very thorough process to get to this point. Uh, we had uh, numerous candidates uh, that we were considering and we were very excited that Dr. Cartwright rose to the top of the list for us. Uh, she brings a lot of experience to the district from a you know, long-term substitute standpoint all the way to an assistant to a superintendent. Um, she's basically done it all in a school district, so she knows what she's stepping into and is ready for the challenge. So we're very excited to welcome her to the district um, and look forward to uh, what she brings to us. Um, we're also very excited that uh, Dr. Cartwright will have some time with Mrs. Kroom uh, so that we can have a smooth and orderly transition within the district over about a two-month period uh, when Mrs. Kroom decides that she wants to go on to the uh, finer times in life as a retiree <laughs> at that point. Uh, so, if there's anybody else, any comments that would like to add to that? If not, we'll go ahead and make this official. Mrs. Allman. I think down there it says the motion carries. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, congratulations, Dr. Cartwright, and welcome to Dover. We're so excited to have you. All right. Great. And afterwards, uh, board members, if you'd like to stick around, we'll socially distance, but have a few little snacks and some time with Dr. Cartwright after the meeting tonight. So are there any other comments or observations from our board members? Okay. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you, everybody.